Hello everyone, I'm Klaus Aranha from the University of Tsukuba and this is Experimental Designs in Computer Science. In this video I want to show some quick cold examples uh, about the topics that we discussed in this week's lecture. Now um, these cold examples uh, it will be already done, it will be very simple and because if it's the first time I want to spend some time explaining a little bit about R not too much. Uh, this will be a short video. I'm still trying to figure out what's the best way to do the format of this video. So if you have any suggestions, uh, they are very welcome. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So what you are what, seeing right here is the interface of RStudio. RStudio is a development it's a environment for R, which is a language, a programming language that is specialized for uh, data, um, data analysis and visualization. So there's a lot of very useful things that we can do in R. Uh, you can use it as a, um, let's say you can use it as a scripting language like in Python. So you can say like, I don't know, mean, uh, you can say X is equal to C, one, two, three, four. And now you have a uh, array and you can do some things like mean of X and that gives you the, uh, and of course, among the R primitives, you have lots of things that are useful for um, statistics, like standard deviation of X, the variance of X. Um, we, al we also have things like the Z. Um, and we're going to see this later, but like calculating the per percentiles and stuff like that. Here in the top, we have what we call a an RMD, so an R Markdown, which is the R equivalent to a Jupyter Notebook. This mixes documentation and code. By the way, this program is available in the Manaba and also in the um, GitHub of the lecture. So you can use this to um, run the code by yourself. I recommend you that you explore this code by yourself and you play with it. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, let look, uh, let, let's look at these markdown. So we can see here we have the text in markdown format and we have the code. The code, the code is in this here. When you have code like this, you can run it. So here we have a simple code that sets a random seed and gets a normal distribution. If you remember, our cable factory, it had, it produced cables with a normal distribution, uh, following a normal distribution with mean 50 and the standard deviation too. So this file here, it simulates our experiment of acquiring 25 cables. So the 25 cables would have this, um, would have these uh, values. So these would simulate what would happen if we did an experiment in that condition. We can change these parameters here. So say, let's say that we want 30 cables this time and we can rerun the code. Another thing that we can do with the R markdown is to click this knit button here. And what knit will do is that we'll take everything that I have in this code and transform it into a nice uh, web page that you can upload to your web page. You can put some there. So you have like all the text and all the code and all the results generated here. Um, in the knit, you also have options to generate a PDF or even a Word file. This is new. I, I did not know that it, it exported to Word. Okay. So let's take a look at our code a little bit. So this simulates our experiment. So we get 50 cables from a normal distribution with mean 50 and standard deviation 2. And then we can calculate the point estimators that we, the point indicators that we learned in the class. Okay. So the sample mean is, well, we calculate the sample mean. It's the sample, it's the sum of the observations divided by the length. So if we execute this code, we can see that the sum, the, the mean of the sample that we obtain was 50.1. And it's really close to the true mean. Okay, but of course, it's a little bit different from the population mean, which is uh, 50. Now, uh, we can also calculate the estimated error, which is um, the, er the estimated error of this mean. And as we saw in this slide, that was 0 
2 if I remember 0 0.04 and we can see that the 0 0.04 was the error of the simulation but for this mean the error of this mean was 0 0.4 we have several different values if we increase the size of our sample so let's make our size of our sample 50 and we generate a new sample we see that our mean is now 49 change a little bit it always changes a little bit and we calculate and now our sample error is a little bit smaller it will tend to be smaller as we add more and more and more it items one, one thing that would be interesting was to okay i'll put some to do's here um now if we yeah we've collect larger samples so now we have three samples a sample of 10 a sample of 25 and a sample of 50 and we have uh, this function that calculates the sample mean error and if we run this if we knit here we can see that for the sample with 10 cables our sample mean error is 7.6 for the sample with 25 errors our error is 32 and for 50 cables the error starts to go small let me add some to do here for the feature so to do and i will add this to do for myself but i challenge you to do these programs because it would be interesting for you to learn r and to fix the knowledge that we saw today so one thing that we could do is for instance um to do let's put it to do here because this is so write code function that shows that the average is a unbiased count the number that times that the average overestimates and underestimates. Also, it would be interesting to write a function that um, plots how the sample error this decreases as the sample size increases. This would indicate the rate of, um, how do you say, um, Reduce it loss. Uh, what's the name for that? Uh, diminishing returns. So some ideas of what you can do to learn a little bit of R uh, with some simple, simple, simple programs in this code. Okay, now I want to show you uh, the second file, which is a student height. Here we're doing our example of calculating the student height from the university. Uh, here I also want to show uh, confidence intervals. So. Now, the data here, instead of simulating the data, we are loading the data from a file. So we have here the raw data directory. And in this raw data directory, we have this file, which is uh, the student height. So this was actually obtained by Felipe. He measured the height of the students of his class. And here, there are the height of many students, 1.57, 1.62, 1.7, etc. Uh, you can calculate their own data from here. This is just a CSV file. And to load the CSV file, we can just do read CSV, okay? So here, when we read the CSV, uh, R is very nice and produces a very nice looking table for this. <clears throat> then, um, one thing that you notice is that when you're doing data analysis like this, it's always useful to have a separate area where you keep your raw data files because you need them for the reproduction, the production, and a different area where you put your um, Wor your working data files, right? The data files after you do manipulation. Anyway, let's see what is the mean height and weight of these students. So the mean height and weight, we can calculate by using the mean function, which is a standard function in R. So here we see how we do, like when we load, have a data frame, so students is a data frame that we load from the file, and here is the attribute height m and weight kilos. Uh, be careful with R because the attributes of the data frame are separated by a dollar sign, not by a point. A point is just a regular character in the variable name. And then we print these two. So the mean height is 1.74 meters and the mean weight is 72 kilos. Now, let's say we want to know the BMI, the body mass index. 
So the BMI follows this fraction, this formula, which is weight divided by height squared, and we can calculate the BMI. So we added a new a new column to the data, which is BMI. So you can look at this code later to see how we add a new column to the data file. And then we can calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the BMI. And you can look at the NEAT file to see that. So for this data, um, the, B, the mean and the standard deviation of the BMI, the mean is 23, the standard deviation, uh, the, st the estimated error is 4. Now, let's look at the confidence interval. So uh, to calculate the confidence interval, there are functions that calculate the, the confidence interval for us, but uh, this calculates it by hand so you can see the formula. So we want the confidence interval of the BMI. So we take all the values in a array and we used a confidence, uh, 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 confidence value of alpha equals 0 0.05. So this is our alpha and the confidence is 1 minus alpha. So the confidence here is the 95% confidence. Now we calculate the low bound, the minimum value and the high bound, the maximum value. And as you saw in the class, we have the mean of the values and we have the quantile of the normal quantile of C, uh, of the alpha divided by two and for the, the values. Okay. Actually, this is for the T because we are using an estimated error. We're using the student T, right? And then we can plot this. So if we run this here, we can see uh, our confidence interval. So this straight line is the mean. And the spotted line is the 95% uh, confidence interval. So the mean should follow somewhere around here. Of course, we don't know what the real mean is in this case because we don't have the true values. We only have the values from the student data. But with 95% confidence, the mean should be somewhere around here. But if it's not here, it could be anywhere. So think about that. Also, it's important to think about what is the population that we're thinking about here, right? This is something that is interesting to discuss. Uh, to do, oh, there's a to do here. There is a library in, in R called ggplot, which produces some very beautiful plots. Uh, and if you have the time and if you are interested in visualization, it's definitely worth studying ggplot to learn how to produce beautiful plots with R. Uh, another thing that we can do is try to investigate the relationship between variables. Usually we do that by a scatter plot. We plot one variable in one axis, another variable in another axis, and we can see the relationship between them. So here we have two data frames, one for male and one for female, and we can calculate the confidence intervals. So let's run this and see how it looks like. So here we have the male students are blue, the female students are red, I believe. Uh, no, it's opposite. The male students are red and the female students are blue. And we can see that the BMI of the female students seems to be slightly lower than the BMI of the male students. So there are a few more ways to observe the data, such as using the histogram or using a box plot. And for these ones, I encourage you to study uh, this program by yourself, so download it and play with it. Um, I hope that you find that using R can make the task of data analysis and data visualization much easier for you. Okay, um, that's it for this video. Uh, this was just a small taste of what you can do with R. I highly recommend that you take a look at the code. And if you have any questions, ask in the um, ask in the Manaba or come to the um, office hours for the lecture. See you next week. Bye-bye.